Your Sunday worship with Dr. Cecilia Greenbar is paid for by Sharing Faith Ministries. In the Gospel according to John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22, I read from the New Revised Standard Version. Please do, ma'am, sir, follow as closely as you can in your translation. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, <clears throat> for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For the time that is mine this morning, I want to preach from the sermon topic, Safe Room. Safe Room. Safe Room. Come on, come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. I receive now, God, the anointing for this assignment. God, I pray that I would preach with wisdom and revelation. I thank you, God, for the prophetic gift to flow in this service. God, I thank you that people are going to be spoken to, seed is going to be sown, uh, revelation is going to come, deliverance is going to come. Everything you desire to do in this house, God, is going to happen. Let's do a good work to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Safe room. Safe room. Keeping with your theme for Women's Day uh, about great and confident expectations, please allow me this morning to suspend the Advent narrative um, and to pick up the life of Jesus after the empty tomb experience. It is here that we are privy to the conversation between Mary Magdalene and a very alive Jesus the Christ. According to John's account of the gospel, there were not very many people who knew at this particular time that Jesus' tomb was in fact empty. The angels knew because they had been sent to roll away the stone. And according to Matthew's gospel, the guards knew, but they were certainly not about to become evangelists and tell the congregation of Jews that the tomb was empty. And now the disciples know because Mary told them. Mary knew, the angels knew, the guards knew, and now they know. Okay, let me say that again. Mary knew, the angels knew, the guards knew, and now they know. We do not know for certain where Mary went after she delivered the message of Jesus' resurrection. We know the angels returned back to God. And we also know that the guards went and told their superiors. But the text is inviting us to investigate the actions of the disciples after hearing that Jesus was alive. John tells us that the disciples were gathered together in a house, but they were not gathered together for the sake of enjoying one another's company. John tells us that in verse 20, and I know you didn't close your Bibles because you're far too smart for that. So in verse 20, John is telling us that they have gathered together out of fear for the Jews. Now we know that the angels, come on now, they went back to God. And we know that the guards told their superiors that Jesus was gone. And we don't know where Mary went after she completed her assignment of telling the disciples that Jesus was alive. But here they are, the Jews locked up in a house 
They locked themselves up in a house. Why? Out of fear for the Jews. What, what is the foundation of this fear? What is it that the disciples think that the Jews know at this point? And how do they know it anyway? Well, what, what are they afraid of? What, what would cause them at this point to go and lock themselves up in the house? What were they afraid of that as a result of them staying inside of the house, they assume was an, in, an invulnerable place of attack. They assumed that nobody could come in and intrude. And I want to submit for our conversation and consideration this morning that their expectations were uh, at the root of their fear. You cannot hear the news that Jesus' tomb is empty and then not expect something to happen. You, you cannot hear that the man who promised to get up out of the grave in three days and is now actually up out of the grave in three days like he said he would and, and not expect something to happen. You, you, can, you cannot hear the news that the tomb is empty and two angels are inside of the tomb announcing to you that Jesus is not here. He's alive and not expect something to happen. You mean to tell me you got the news that Jesus is not dead and you don't expect something to happen? They're expecting something to happen and so they lock themselves inside of a house out of fear for the Jews. Were they expecting the Jews to hunt them down after the crucifixion that happened on Calvary? Were they expecting Mary to now go and stir up the Jewish population with the message that she had shared with them, thereby resulting in some kind of backlash? Why are they locked inside of a house out of fear for the Jews? It is because they expected the Jews would harm them in some kind of manner. So for security purposes, they locked themselves inside of a house. Y'all still with me this morning? Here they are inside of their safe house. Inside of a place where they had perceived to be invulnerable to attack and intrusion. They are inside of a place where they could put their security operation together for whatever was about to happen next. And in walks Jesus. I like the way John describes it for us in verse 19. He says in my translation, Jesus came and stood among them. Now, now I know somebody in here this morning is very tempted to get hung up right here. And, and on how in the world was Jesus able to enter into their safe room, their safe house, and stand among them? Now, you know, we have a tendency to ask the wrong questions of the text. Now, now if the door Doors are locked and security is on the door. How Jesus get in? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> but, but, but that is not the question that you should be asking of the text on this morning. What you should be asking of the text this morning is, Jesus, when are you going to come and stand with me and my family in the midst of my fears? You shouldn't be asking how Jesus got in that room. What you need to be asking of the text this morning is, Jesus, how you going to drop in on me? Jesus, how you going to get past all of my security? Jesus, how you going to get past all of the walls that I put up around my gentle heart? Jesus, how you going to get past my low bank account? Jesus, how you going to get past my bad doctor's report? Now, that's what you ought to be asking this morning. Yeah, God, yeah, God. I don't care how you get past my security protocols, Jesus. I don't care how you get past the walls that I've erected around my fragile heart. I don't care how you are able to break uh, or hack into my well-ordered life. All I want to know is when. That's all I want to know this morning because I got some areas where I have some fear and all I want to know is when. When are you going to come and stand in the midst of my fears that had me hiding out? 
Now, that's an excellent question that y'all asked this morning because it will allow me to say to somebody prophetically this morning that you need to expect Jesus to come and stand among you. Uh, somebody got it and the rest of you didn't, but if I only came for three, that's all right with me. You need to expect Jesus to come and stand with you. I don't know what you're going through, but God sent me here to tell you, first of all, you need to expect Jesus to come and stand with you. Oh, about six more got it, Lady Ellis. But, but you need to expect him to come stand right there with you in the midst of whatever it is you're going through. So here they are, y'all. Here they are. They're inside of this safe house, this safe room. And Jesus came and stood among them. And when Jesus speaks to them, come on now, you need to listen very closely to what Jesus says to them. And it's very simple. Peace be with you. All right. Then Jesus in verse 20, therefore, shows evidence that it really is him. He shows them his hands. He shows them the side to say, yeah, it's me. It, it really is me. And when the disciples see the evidence that it really is Jesus, John tells us that the disciples rejoice. Okay. They rejoice. Come on now. But they still have fear. Y'all get it? Come on. Now, remember now, they are locked inside because of fear. You didn't, you didn't forget that now, did you? They locked inside because of fear. And when Jesus enters the house, he never says a word to address their fear. I'm just, I need to talk to the people who had fear this morning. When Jesus enters the house, he never says a word to address their fear. Instead, he speaks to their peace, not their fears. After he decrees peace upon them, they respond by rejoicing. Okay. Has anybody ever come to worship full of fear about the situations that are oppressing you? And then you discern that the presence of the Lord is in the place and you start rejoicing and you finish rejoicing. But yet you still have some fear. Okay, you, 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 you come to church, you, you close the doors, and yet you receive the fact that Jesus is here. You feel the anointing of God. You rejoice, but you still have some fear. <laughs> you can be full in the worship service and full of fear all at the same time. You discern God's presence. You're happy that he uh, manifests and you still are full of fear. I'm just trying to be real this morning. Now, we know that the opposite of fear is faith. Right? But when Jesus decrees upon them, he speaks peace and not faith. If he had come to deal with their fear, he would have decreed faith. But he decrees peace. Oh, Lord. Have mercy. Well, but, but the second time, after they finished rejoicing, he decrees peace upon them again. Come on, it's right there in your passage. He says a second time, peace be with you. Question, would it be fair this morning to ask why Jesus is not addressing the fear that they have of the Jews, the fear that has locked them inside of the house? Well, I want to submit for your consideration this morning that when Jesus decrees peace to be with them, that Jesus is not looking at their current circumstances, but Jesus is looking at future expectations of what tomorrow holds for them. Now, that when Jesus Jesus comes in the room and he begins to decree peace uh, and he doesn't even talk about their fears. Uh, he's not even dealing with what's on their heart. Uh, he's dealing with what's on his heart. Uh, oh, when I say that Jesus walks in the room uh, and don't you know he deserves their fear? Now, how you know that, Pastor? Well, all through the scripture, every time he's trying to teach something to his disciples uh, and the Pharisees are around and they've got these contrary thoughts, he, the scriptures always say he knows what's in their heart. Uh, well, don't you know that when he walks up in a room that's all locked up, uh, he is fully aware that they have fear in their heart, but yet he does not even speak 
to their fears. Uh, y'all can get with me because you come to church sometimes uh, and you are full of fear uh, and you have a smile on your face and you're all dressed up and you, it took everything that you had to get to church and, and yet you're full of fear uh, and you have it in your mind. I don't know what pastor's going to preach about today. I don't know what the choir is going to sing about today, but I sure hope he says something about this stuff that has me shaking in my boots. I don't know what the sermon is going to be today. I, I don't know what pastor is going to preach, but I'm so praying that pastor is going to say something to deal with the fear that I have that came from the doctor's report. I, I looked at my checking account and I got scared because it looks like I, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills this month. And I don't know what pastor is going to preach this morning, but I so hope he has a word on prosperity. I don't know what he has to say this morning, but I so hope he has a word on healing. I don't know what pastor is going to preach this morning, but I need a word on deliverance. You came to church with some fears. He said, I don't even know Dr. Greenbar, but I sure hope she's going to preach about this stuff that's got me shaking in my boots. But I need to tell somebody this morning that when Jesus walks in the midst of them, he has a word not about what's on their heart, but about what's on his heart. Come on, you ought to thank God for the word that's on the heart of Jesus. Come on and thank him because he's got a word that's on his heart. And that's a mighty good word. Because the word tells us in the Old Testament of Isaiah that our ways are not like his ways. And our thoughts are not his thoughts. As a matter of fact, he was able to classify our thoughts. And he says that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And his ways are higher than our ways. So if Jesus is going to come in the midst of my circumstances, we don't need to spend time with what's on my mind. We don't need to spend time about what's on my heart. Because it's way down low. So, Jesus, if you're going to show up in my circumstances, let's talk about what's on your heart. Let's talk about your ways. Let's talk about your past. Let's talk about your visions. Let's talk about your ideas. Forget what's on my mind. I want to talk about what's on your mind. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, I don't get to say this often, but y'all be seated. <laughs> I said it's my Christmas present. Hallelujah. Good God from Zion. Hallelujah. By the Spirit of the Lord, Citadel, I'm here this morning to make an announcement that God is decreeing upon you what you will need uh, to come out of your safe room. Uh, God is decreeing upon you on today what you will need to come out of that place where you have hidden yourself. Uh, you will be decreed this morning what God has for you. And God sent me to decree upon you what you will need to come out and do and be what God has for you. But the scripture says that you should believe the prophet and you'll live. All right, all right, all right. They had themselves inside this room all locked up in the house. But we see in verse 21 that Jesus is standing with them. Was hearing the news that they were being sent out into the presence of those for which they were hiding supposed to dispel their fears? Come on, I bet you closed your Bibles, didn't you? Because right there in the scripture, the scripture says, Jesus says, look, peace be with you. And I'm sending you out. Oh, God. I'm sending you out. That's a heck of a thing to say to people who have intentionally locked themselves in. I'm sending you out. That's not what I expected to hear, Jesus. I locked myself in on purpose. But now you're telling me you're sending me out. You know I got some fears in my heart, so can you talk about how I can be comfortable right here inside where I am? But he says, I'm sending you, I'm sending you, I'm sending you out, I'm sending you out. Now listen, now, now is that supposed to make them feel better? Is it supposed to make them feel peaceful? Unlikely. How, how were they to have peace if they were going to go out into the very arena that they were afraid of? Here's the lesson for us this morning. You ready for this? Uh-huh. God doesn't send fearful people anywhere without the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Did you see it in the scripture? 
Yeah, yeah, see, he doesn't send fearful people out anywhere without the Holy Ghost. And so the scripture says that, that he breathed on them. I'm closing now. Is that all right? The scripture says he breathed on them. And he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. He breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Uh, to some scared folks, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Uh, in a day and in a time, not in the citadel, but in a day and in a time uh, where people scared to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, uh, uh, come on now. He breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Uh, why? You don't need the Holy Ghost to stay up in a room. Hear me somebody, hear me somebody. You don't need all of that dunamis power to be locked up in a safe room. Now, you don't need the Holy Ghost to be in a room where can't nobody get in. Now, you don't need the Holy Ghost to be locked up uh, where everybody's thinking like you and see things the way you see things. Now, you don't need the Holy Ghost power to stay locked up and comfortable in your small little box. Uh, but the scripture says he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they had an assignment on their life. They had somewhere to go that meant they had to get up out of their safe room. He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Well, can I bring it on home while I get ready to get on up out of here? Well, they were in their safe room. They were in their house. But if I look around the citadel on this morning, I believe this is something like a safe house. Oh, right here in Detroit, Michigan. Oh, Pastor Ellis, I was reading on your website about how you started the church at the word of the Lord. And I was reading on your website how you brought in the information about how Detroit uh, is the most miserable place uh, in the United States of America. Uh, I was reading on your website uh, how you, by the Spirit of God, uh, has decided to take a stand uh, right here in Detroit uh, and be a fortified city. Mm. Oh, that sounds like a safe house to me. Uh, that the citadel of praise uh, is yet a fortified place. Uh, it's a fortified safe room uh, right here in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, now, I need to say this, uh, that everybody ain't able, Pastor, uh, to be a safe house. Uh, so this is the place uh, where week after week uh, people come into this church uh, where everybody has told them uh, that you live in the worst place in the United States of America, uh, that you have the worst circumstances of any in our entire country but you are afraid of what's happening to you outside of this place so you come into the church house not sure how things are going to come together you come into the church house not sure how your life is going to be changed you come into the church house right out of the jail house you come into the church house right out of the whole house you come into the church house right off the street you come into the church house right out of the crack house you come into the church house right out of the homely shelter. You come into the church house right off the street. And you're scared because you don't know how things are going to change in your life. You're scared because you don't know if God has forsaken you. And then right here in the midst of all this praising going on. And right here in the midst of all this rejoicing going on. You look around and the next thing you know, the Holy Ghost has shown up in the house. The Holy Ghost has stepped in your midst. The Holy Ghost has come and slid right beside you. I said, child of God, I see what you're going through. Child of God, I'm here to strengthen you. I'm here to decree over you. Because we're not worried about what's out there. Because I'm sending you out there. And when you get out there, you'll have power, Holy Ghost power, to make a difference in the lives of your neighbors, your friends, your enemies. The hopeless, the downtrodden, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Well, I need to tell you, church, while I'm on my way up out of here, that God is looking for a place where he can breathe. God is looking for a house. 
where he can breathe. Y'all didn't catch it, did you? God is looking for a house where he can step in and begin to breathe. Breathe on the people. Too many churches, the Holy Ghost can't even breathe. Too many places, the Holy Ghost cannot breathe. And so the people are in those places with no power and no hope and no joy. All they have is their fears. But God is looking for a place where he can breathe, where he can breathe, where this looks like a mighty fine place to start breathing on your fears and breathing on your anxieties and breathing on your hopelessness and breathing until you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Do right power to raise Jesus up out of the grave. Power, Holy Ghost power, receive ye the power of the Holy Ghost. Say yes, 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 yes. Come on and praise it. Greenhouse Production. Come where vision grows.